Greetings everyone, it's package opening time, woo! Got a package from Max on Fire 67 and we're gonna open it up right now. And I'm almost out of battery, so let's quickly go through the rundown of who's in the stick am room watching. We have 1985 Dude, Aficionados Chris, uh, Avenue Q Lover 212, Buff Daddy Bill, Crimson Ooze, E McG 211, Epic Conspiracy, Irish Mafia 88, J Star 305, Pablo 123, Fucking Egg, Skin Slip, and somebody down below. Hold on. Where's my pointer? So this is very awkward where I am here. There we go. And you know that guy. And the lucky six on webcam, we have Aficionados Chris. Avenue Q Lover 212. J Star 305 stuffing his face. Fucking A, who sent me a package a long time ago. Check it out. And Crimson Ooze, who we all know and love as Mia. Oh, and Pablo, one, two, three. Well, he's screen. Oh, wait, where is he? There he is! Hey! Alright. Alrighty, tried to get through the shoutouts fast because apparently they just annoy the shit out of some of you. You're just jealous because you're not here, aren't you? I know it. Anyway, without any further ado, let's open today's package. Today. On the Multimedia Chronicles. Today. Right now. Today. Welcome back. <laughs> well, I had to go on a bit of an epic trek to get this one because unlike my previous place, the post office isn't exactly located within walking distance, so I wasn't even sure exactly where it was. I actually received the notice for this on Friday. It's currently Thursday, right before the next Friday, so fortunately they hang on to packages for a couple of weeks at the post office, so I had plenty of time to get it, plus I was working all week. Anyway, who cares? We're here now. It's in my hand. Box cutter activated. Let's see what we got. This is, of course, another one from Max on Fire, who sent me one a while back. If you dig through my videos a bit, I'm sure you can find it. And uh, just make sure everything's at the bottom. There's a little piece uh, of package that, that got ripped there. I don't know. It's like someone was trying to get in there or something. It's not enough that you can see anything. You can see it's probably some DVDs or something. But anyway, let's take a look. All right. Now, Max actually forgot to send the letter, which I think he forgot to send last time as well. So he actually sent me the letter that he meant to send as a YouTube private message. She's love how I'm waving this sharp object around. Yeah, anyway. So I printed it out. It's sitting over there in the printer. I'll grab it in a minute. Um, taking care not to read it, because of course it lists everything that's in the package. So my trick is to sort of throw my eyes slightly out of focus so it's just like a blur and then just kind of fumble around for the print button. And then of course my printer decided to take like five minutes to warm up and actually start printing the damn thing. So it's left sitting there on the screen and I'm trying not to look while I'm waiting for the stupid printer to warm up and actually get going. Yeah, anyway, eventually it printed and I closed the screen. I was like, God, like spoiler temptation or what? Hey guys, got the letter here. Let's read, shall we? Hey Sean, glad to see you have a new home and your DVD shelf looks awesome. I'm rather fond of this shelf myself, I'm quite proud of that. Let's open this sucker up. Box cutter way activated, let's go. Done. Alright, now, don't like to look, I like to be surprised. There's a lot of stuff in here, let's, let's feel our way around a little bit. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go with the... So I'll probably do what I did with some of the other ones, is I'll read the letter from a different angle and we'll cut back and forth just because it's easier that way. So the order I take them out of the package is probably going to be completely different than the order they're in the letter. So we'll see how it goes from there. Alright, so let's grab the one at the front here and let's see what we've got. <laughs> oh, hey! Man, I haven't seen this in ages! Jim Carrey, The Mask! Yeah, oh, I didn't even know this was on Blu-ray. Now on to the Blu-rays. The first one is the Jim Carrey classic, The Mask. I like this movie a lot because it lets Jim Carrey go all out and he really suits the character of The Mask. I agree. Awesome! 
I remember there was like a big special edition laser disc of this that came out moon, moons ago, many moons ago, that I always wanted to get because it had additional, uh, had extra scenes and alternate opening and stuff like that. This is awesome. So let's see, this is from, where is this from? It doesn't even say, oh, it's from New Line. Okay, cool. So let's see what we got for extras. We have additional scenes, commentary by director Chuck Russell, commentary. Another commentary by director Chuck Russell, New Line Cinema co-chairman Bob Shea. Nightmare on Elm Street fans will know Bob Shea. Uh, writer Mike Werb, executive producer Mike Richardson, producer Bob Engelman, visual effects supervisor Scott Squires, animation supervisor Tim Bertino, and cinematographer John Leonetti. Return to Edge City retrospective documentary, introducing Cameron Diaz, screen test. Oh wow, was this Cameron Diaz's first film? I had no idea. Cartoon Logic and What Makes Fido Run featurettes and theatrical trailer. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going to look forward to that because I have not seen it basically since it was new. All right. Oh, well, let's continue on down the pile here. Oh, God. Feels like something. Feels like another Blu-ray. Let's take a look here. Oh, my God. Sweet. <laughs> I have never seen this, and it's like one of the biggest cult classics ever, ever. Holy crap, and just loaded with extras from Shout Factory, no less. From the Roger Corman collection, Death Race 2000. Next up is the Roger Corman cult classic cheese fest, Death Race 2000. The film is filled with social commentary on our love of violence. You also gotta love Sylvester Stallone in this movie, he's hilarious. I can't wait to check it out. Oh yeah, with like a pre-Rocky Sylvester Stallone in it, and it's got David Carradine, and oh yeah, I've been wanting to see this for ages. Holy Moses. Okay, so let's check out the special features on this bad boy. Uh, so we got a new anamorphic widescreen high-definition transfer from the interpositive film Element. David on Death Race, an interview with David Carradine. Audio commentary with Roger Corman and Mary Warrenov. New audio commentary with assistant director Louis Teague and editor Tina Hirsch. Playing the game, looking back at Death Race 2000. Ready to Wear, interview with costume designer Jane Rome. Rome? 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 I don't know, anyway. Designing Dystopia, a detailed look at the design of the film's now legendary race cars, costumes, and futuristic landscapes with members of the production design and costume crew. Start Your Engines, interview with author Ib Melchior. Oh no, I'm not done. It's, it keeps going. There's more. Killer Score, an all-new interview with composer Paul Chihara on the creation of the film's eclectic score. Leonard Moulton interviews Roger Corman about Death Race 2000. Awesome. Theatrical trailer, theatrical trailer with commentary by John Landis, courtesy of trailers from Hell.com. TV and radio spots, a 12-page booklet, and new world trailers. Oh, wow. Let's just quickly crack this puppy open here and take a, take a peek. There we go. Look at that. See, now that is a nice set. Thank you, Shout Factory, for doing it right. Yeah, got a booklet and everything. And it looks like, um, oh, I see, it's a reversible cover, too. So on the other side of the cover, looks like the Japanese version or something. So we actually got that. Isn't that sweet? That is so nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to have a blast with this one. Yeah, this is like one of those big sort of cult films that I don't know why I never got around to watching. I just didn't. <laughs> but it's definitely been high on my must-see list for a very, very long time. Thank you so much. Um, and actually, while we're showing the innards, let's take a look at the inside of the mask. Oh, my goodness. We got the disc and something. I'm glad I looked inside. What do we got here? We got... Uh... Hey, there we go. We got, <laughs> when does this expire? We got uh, movie cash to go see Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore. Expires December 31st, 2010. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> Very useful. Yeah, I have, you know, I, I, I tend to keep those anyway just because they're collector's items included with the whatever movie it was at the time. And uh, yeah, so let's see what else we got here. So, oh, something in a slip cover. Always nice when they have the slip covers included. Well, feels like a DVD. Let's see what we got. Oh wow, what's this? The Five Deadly Venoms. Check that out. First up is a classic Shaw Brothers film called Five Deadly Venoms. It's cool because it's a kung fu movie that's also a detective story. And the film's final fight is one of the best martial fights ever. 
Sweet! I am like so lacking in kung fu movie knowledge that uh, pretty much anything from kung fu is new to me. That's awesome. From the Shaw Brothers Classic Collection, Dragon Dynasty. Uh, put this out and sweet. So five de the Five Deadly Venoms, another cult classic. So we're getting some good cult films here. This is good. Uh, the Five Deadly Venoms is the martial arts masterpiece that inspired generations of action films, rap music, and pop culture. Sweet. The dying ma master of the notorious Poison Clan assigns his final martial arts student one last epic quest. Find his five most mysterious and dangerous disciples, each trained in a different fighting style, each hiding under an assumed identity, and bring them together or bring them to justice. Combining a twisting story, phenomenal characters, and martial arts mayhem, J legendary director Chang Che of the One-Armed Swordsman sparked an international kung fu movie explosion that continues to this day. The film's climactic five-way battle is the stuff of legend, as good as, if not better than, any on-screen fight before or since, according to MutantReviewers.com. Awesome, and then in uh, the special features we've got feature commentary by Hong Kong cinema expert Bay Logan. Very cool. This sounds awesome. <laughs> One of the best old school kung fu films ever made from kungfucultcinema.com. Sweet. Yeah, I'm going to have a blast with this. Thank you so much. Um, actually, ever since seeing kung, uh, Kill Bill, I've really been interested in the uh, sort of back history of the whole kung fu genre and such. So definitely going to look forward to that one. Let's see what else we got here. Feels like, feels like another movie. Okay, I think it's I think it's Blu-ray. Let's. Oh, sweet! I have not seen this yet. Gran Torino on Blu-ray. Next up is Clint Eastwood in his final film, Gran Torino. I don't think it's his. Is it his final film? Like he didn't die or anything, as far as I know. This is his most recent film, I guess. Anyway, the film featured one of his best performances, and the character he plays is basically a more talkative and racist version of Dirty Harry. Awesome! Can't wait to check that one out. I don't. It's kind of slipped me by all this time. So thank you very much for sending that one to me. Oh man! Awesome. Love me some badass Clint. That's for sure. Oh man! Thank you. Okay. So for special features here, we have "Manning the Wheel: The Meaning of Manhood as Reflected in American Car Culture." Gran Torino, more than a car, visit Detroit on the Woodward Dream Cruise, an annual vintage car event where buffs describe the unique bond between men and vehicles. And in a Blu-ray exclusive, The Eastwood Way, exploring the actor-director's filmmaking process up close. Very cool. Oh man, thank you so much. I'm gonna have I'm gonna really enjoy that one too. You just know the kind of stuff that I like or that I basically need to see. That's that's awesome. Okay, so let's see. It feels like we've got two more items here. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, awesome. Criterion, no less. The Criterion Collection Blu-ray edition of Terry Zwigoff's Crumb. The final Blu-ray is the Criterion edition of Crumb, which is a terrific documentary about the adult cartoonist whose comic Fritz the Cat was later adapted into a movie. Yes, by, you know, sort of underground filmmaker uh, Ralph Bakshi. Uh, great stuff. Although apparently Robert Crumb doesn't care for the movie, but I always liked it. But, uh, anyway... It also contains a commentary by Roger Ebert before he lost his voice. Yeah, it must have been, like, shortly before, because he lost his voice, what, a couple years ago? And that commentary, uh, according to the Blu-ray, was done on, in 2006. So, yeah, definitely uh, cool to be able to, to hear him give his thoughts on the film. Yeah, I used to have this on DVD. This is fantastic. This is such a good movie. Uh, basically, the life story of underground uh, cartoonist Robert Crumb, creator of Fritz the Cat, and... Uh, numerous numerous other things and of course this is criterion so this is going to be like just uh fantastic they seldom disappoint oh wow they got yeah this is something the dvd did not have is i can't really show you all the pictures in here because there's of course nudity but um yeah if you're at all interested in comic books or the history of underground comics or anything like that you basically have to see this movie. I mean, because it's, it's all about the guy who is considered one of the pioneers of, of the genre. And, uh, and it's great. I mean, it, it, it's a very touching, personal uh, look into, into the life of Robert Crumb. Um, 
you know, it, it, just his, uh, and Robert Crumb himself participates in it, of course, quite heavily, and, uh, and also we get a rare glimpse at his, his family and everything. It is just such a good movie. If you're, if you're at all interested in the history of comics or underground comics or just Robert Crumb in general, this is an absolute must-see. Uh, Terry Zwigoff, you may know from uh, Ghost World and, uh, of course, Art School Confidential. Um, just a, a really, really interesting director who does some really cool stuff. And uh, this was one of the movies that really kind of put him on the map because I think prior to this, uh, Robert Crumb was a bit of an enigma. Not many people really knew much about him, so this is really, uh, really a big treat for anyone who's a fan of his work. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. Um, I'm definitely going to enjoy checking this one out again. And uh, in terms of uh, extras here, we have uh, Director Approved Blu-ray Special Edition Features. We have a new restored high-definition digital transfer approved by director Terry Zwigoff with uncompressed monorail soundtrack, two audio commentaries, one featuring Zwigoff from 2010 and one with Zwigoff and critic Roger Ebert from 2006. More than 50, oh wow, more than 50 minutes of unused footage, stills gallery, plus a booklet featuring an essay by film critic Jonathan Rosenbaum and artwork by Charles Jesse Maxson and Robert Crumb. Very cool. This is this is fantastic. Yeah, De definitely a welcome addition to the collection. That's going to be fantastic. Okay, and finally, one last item in here. Let's see what we got. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I've been dying to play this. I am the God of War three. <laughs> finally, we have God of War three. No words can describe how awesome this game is. Literally, no words to describe how awesome this game is. Oh, finally, I can see the next chapter of the saga. This is so awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, I absolutely loved the first two of, of God of War. And, uh, oh, no instructions. Oh, well, that's okay. I know how to play it. Um, but yeah, I absolutely loved the first two, and uh, I didn't actually get around to playing the first two until they were re-released on the PS3 in that uh, two-pack of, uh, you know, the, the high-def upgraded versions. And of course, anyone who's played the second one knows that it leaves off of this major cliffhanger, literally, like literally a cliffhanger, they're hanging off a cliff, and uh, yeah, so I've been dying to see what happens next. I mean, this is just, this is fantastic. I am, yeah, if I'm gone for the next couple weeks, and you guys are wondering why, it's probably because I'm playing this. So thank you. Thank you so much. God of War 3. That is fantastic. I would also like to recommend to you the Apocalypse Now Full Disclosure Edition Blu-ray. Yes. Oh, it's definitely one I want to pick up. It's just a little outside my price range right now. It contains one of the best transfers for a 30-plus year old film and the best sound for a film 30 years or older. That edition also contains the documentary Hearts of Darkness, a filmmaker's apocalypse, which was released theatrically in 1991. Yeah, I remember there was a bit of a, a stink that that wasn't included with the previous uh, deluxe edition DVD of Apocalypse Now. Uh, I think this is the first time that they've ever actually been bundled together, as they always should have been. Um, I have not seen Hearts of Darkness, though I have seen both versions of Apocalypse Now, and uh, absolutely love it. Uh, I think it's a fantastic film. Uh, definitely, definitely plan to pick that one up at some point. So thanks, Sean, for providing all us media lovers YouTube videos to look forward to and enjoy. And thank you, Max on Fire, for yet another epically epic package. I'm going to have a blast with all that stuff, man. Thank you so much. Oh, man. That was an epic, epic package. Thank you so much. This is this is like such an amazing mix of stuff. Uh, wow, I, I'm I'm pretty much speechless despite my rambling. <laughs> I'm speechless and rambling all at the same time. Go figure. Yeah, thank you so much, Max on Fire sixty seven. Everybody, check out his YouTube page. I probably gave you the link earlier, but here it is again. I, it's, Funny, you know, I've been to his YouTube page a number of times. Um, I, I have yet to see him engulfed in fire. It's it's very strange. Okay, lame joke. Anyway, <sighs> that's it for me to you for now, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, next time we'll do something else. Alrighty. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.